We're going back to October of 2012 for this week's classic interview. This is with a member of the Westboro Baptist Church's Phelps family, but it is not Shirley Phelps Roper, and it is also not Margie Phelps. It is Jonathan Phelps. Jonathan Phelps was actually the first Phelps family member, the first member of the Westboro Baptist Church at all, who joined us. And we are going back to this interview where Jonathan Phelps actually was quite insightful, predicting that there would ultimately be full marriage equality, although he didn't use the term marriage equality, but that what we know as marriage equality would soon come to the entire United States of America. Jonathan Phelps, in the midst of the horribly bigoted hate, a little bit of a very, very insightful prediction. Let's go to that from October of 2012, my interview with Jonathan Phelps. Joining me is Jonathan Phelps from the Westboro Baptist Church. He's the brother of Shirley Phelps Roper, also the son of Pastor Fred Phelps. I see the family resemblance, uh, Jonathan. I think a good place to start would be 2012 election. We have come down to two candidates at this point for the presidential election. Uh, the, the realistic options are re-electing President Obama or electing Mitt Romney. I'm curious, what's, what's the, who are you supporting? Well, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. I don't support either. Uh, I figure Obama's going to win, but uh, and being a lifelong Democrat, you'd think I'd vote for him, but I'm um, not going to vote for either of those fellas. On that topic, I mean, as it stands today, you know, we have President Obama who has repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell, as well as basically said he favors p blanket gay, gay marriage, full equality for gay and lesbian couples, whereas Mitt Romney has said marriage should only be between a man and a woman. He wants a constitutional amendment that would define a marriage as such. It would seem to me that that would be way more in line with your views. Well, of course, Mitt Romney's a liar, ah. and so I don't believe anything he says, and uh, I don't think there's a whit of difference between the two candidates. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I really believe that um, same-sex marriage is a fait accompli in this country and, um, and have been saying that for decades. A couple of decades we've been saying that. Once that is even up for debate, the debate is uh, – the contest is over. Interesting. Um, so I, I, that's actually really interesting because – so in the past when I've talked to, for example, Shirley Phelps Roper, your sister, and, and a lot of other anti-gay nuts, I say, you know, you guys are going to lose on this one. Eventually, we're going to have widespread marriage equality. And people like Shirley say it, it is not a given. But you're saying for decades you've considered eventually there will be marriage equality for all. Uh, last time I checked, Shirley's not a nut. Uh, and the last time I checked also, uh, Shirley uh, solidly stated that it's a fait accompli. Okay, just not to me. I'm, I'm not arguing with you. I'm okay. just saying I find it interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how, how long will it take until we get full marriage equality in your mind? I mean, we have a handful of states now, but what timeline are we looking at? Soon. Okay. Soon in I mean, biblical terms? Soon in scientific <laughs> terms? I mean, what's, uh, what are we talking about? We're talking uh, the Supreme Court of the United States will, in follow-up to their earlier decisions and consistent with them, will mandate it. Interesting. Okay, well, that's, that, that's I think, it, very, very interesting. Let's, I wanna, we talked to you years and years ago, and you said that while you don't think that there is any will on the behalf of the government to put homosexuals to death, that you personally supported that. Is that still your view, Jonathan? Well, it's the, it's the, the view of the Bible. It's the clear teaching of the Bible that is what is a righteously established human government should be following the rules of the Bible. Okay. Uh, that Mosaic Code is very clear on that matter. Uh, this bunch of thugs and thieves, the base, uh, the bottom tier of, of human kind that constitute our governmental leaders, um, to talk in terms of them doing anything righteous or for any legitimate purpose um, is a joke. No, and I understand that. So, I, I mean, I, I'm hearing a lot of the same thing you said years ago, but you believe that based on what the Bible says, we should have death penalty for homosexuality. Abs absolutely. What would be the method of death? Would it be lethal injection? I know that the Bible says, you know, it, the Bible seems partial to stoning in many cases. What would be the method through which you would say homosexuals should be put to death? Well, of course, uh, 
duly constituted human government, um, righteously established, where it would not be um, a violation of those constitutional pr premises. Yeah. Um, that is, that there would not be um, an enforcement of it that would be discriminatory, uh, which is what our current criminal justice system is debilitated with and other problems. But so uh, what would be the form of putting them to death? Well, of course, um, human government would have to establish that. And since I'm not involved in that aspect of it, I'm not answering that. Fair enough. Are it personally, completely though, rhetorical. Per personally, though, are you partial to stonings? Com completely rhetorical question. No, what I'm partial to personally is people repenting. Okay. That's what I'm partial to. All right. Well, so I guess we're not going to get quite the answer I was hoping for there. Question on this, though. Do you also believe that women who were not virgins on their wedding days should also be put to death, as indicated by Deuteronomy 22, uh, 13 to 21? Well, let's get 22, 13 to 21 out and examine that. I've got that. it here. Let's... I mean, I, I know you know what's in it. Do you also support that? I mean, should we be putting to death all, all women who are not virgins, verifiable virgins, legitimate virgins, to quote Todd Aiken, on their wedding day? Well, of course, th that verse you're referring to is it's a matter between the spouse, the person that is married. And if they're claiming that a fraud was perpetrated on the marriage, and that is that the marriage was entered into upon the explicit representation that she was virgin. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, it would cut both ways. What, but what, what Deuteronomy says is that we're talking, we're talking about a stony. The men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die. That is the word of God. If she both perpetrated a fraud on the marriage um, and her husband... Uh, which would have been the cruelest thing in the world for him to do, frankly, uh, uh, claims that he was defrauded in some way. Right. So there's a caveat. Then that, then that, was, that was the punishment that was prescribed. But isn't it interesting, Jonathan, and this applies also, I mean, you know, Leviticus and Deuteronomy are both pretty clear about the abomination of consuming shellfish. Isn't it interesting how on the putting homosexuals to death, you're very, very hard line, but when it comes to stoning the non-virgins, and you know, you know that in your own family, your sister has this child out of wedlock, Sam Phelps Roper. There's a lot of places where, where you, people on your side say, well, you know, it's, it's if this and if that and so on and so forth. There's a lot of equivocation, but not on homosexuality. Why is that? Isn't it a little oh, bit no, there's, hypocritical? There's no equivocation. If there's not repentance of any of these sins, yeah. uh, there are serious consequences. They can't be a member of the church. They have no reasonable expectation of heaven. Um, you, what you did was, of course, you took a silly argument about a ceremonial law concerning the consumption of, of the ceremonial diet, and then, then you simply, by um, the wave of a hand, it put it on the same base, made it equal with the moral law. Yeah, and but that's, that's not, the thing, isn't it? You that's not legitimate. That's isn't, not legitimate. It, isn't it your side, Jonathan, who is, who is arbitrarily taking, uh, uh, t taking that and taking it down from the same level as homosexuality? It's all very arbitrary, isn't it? And none of it has any bearing on the law, given separation of church and state. Well, there's several questions there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paul made it very clear, and Peter made it very clear right. in the book of Acts, that the dietary law is no longer applicable ah. uh, to those who believe God. But then let's in, focus on the stoning of the virgin then. Let's focus on the stoning of the, of the non-virgin. If, if, there, if there was going to be a duly constituted uh, rule of law established based upon the Mosaic Code, right. that, that moral law is, uh, is enforceable also. Okay. All right. So we're making that distinction. Last thing I want to touch there's on. A, there's a huge distinction. Because, no, and I understand it. I, I appreciate you making that. Because the moral that. law predates the dietary law of the Mosaic Code. Hey, real quick, There's, Jonathan, and New I know Test I don't, I don't want to get... Is, New Testament is full of the moral law. It is chock full. It, I, I agree with that. Why do so many kids leave Westboro? Of course, we know of Nate Phelps, and we've talked to him, but there's also Libby Alvarez, formerly Libby Phelps. We've got Mark Phelps, Catherine Phelps, Dorotha Bird, formerly Dorotha Phelps. Is it because 
of the physical violence, why, why is it so many of these uh, people are leaving the church? Of course, uh, that's a, a pretend and a pretense, all that alleged uh, physical violence. The, no, well, hold on a Bible. second. Both Nathan Phelps and Shirley Phelps Roper have admitted to the beatings. They just didn't both call them abuse. Well, first of all, uh, children are to be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay. And, when you're and when you're disciplining your child uh, pursuant to the biblical standard, it's not abuse. Okay. And, the law does, and the law recognizes it as it not being abuse. And I can cite you the case that we argued to the Kansas Supreme Court um, where they tried to make it a crime. Um, now, check this out. The real question that ought to be posed is, how is it that there would be nine children uh, still here? That's the miraculous thing. The it is. It's, it's incredible. It, why did you? It's incredible that you all stayed given the, the treatment. But why did the others leave? Is my question. The the treatment uh, was the best treatment that any human child uh, ought to and appreciate uh, would receive. Hmm. So why reprobates? go and off and wander into filth and debauchery yeah. is, a, is a question that I'll leave to your ex expertise, both on a personal and professional level, I'm sure. Well, I'm, I was hoping to get some sense from you ab about that. Okay. Uh, last, absolutely last thing. I'm Jewish, but I'm relatively non-religious. Am I still going to hell, and how can I avoid that? Well, you have to repent just like every other human does. Okay. Just because, just because you picked that pretense of a god uh, it's not any different from the next well, fool I didn't that pick has. It. In other words, I was born into a Jewish family. Well, you you were born into um, a system of false religious um, teachings. Okay. Nine ninety nine point nine nine percent of the population is. Okay. Many wow. of the me many of the members of the Westboro Baptist Church were. Many of the people that were born into this family were exposed to many false religious systems. Some of, of which were adopted. And some of which were um, had to be uh, they had to be taught hmm. why it was a false religious system. You're not unique. You're just a rebel like the rest of them. You so just, just you by just, sheer virtue of being born Jewish, I'm a rebel. Well, of course. Okay. Okay. No, it's good to know. But, I, but, see, but you're no longer a little child. You now have to answer, stand on your own two feet, and get your big boy pants on and deal with the reality of the situation. Yeah. You have you have a non delegable duty to learn what is required of you and to do it. All right. Well, hopefully during the next interview, I, I would be able to be taught from you exactly how, how to do that. Unfortunately, today we're out of time. Jonathan Phelps, a brother of Shirley Phelps Roper, son of Fred Phelps, Westboro Baptist Church, of course, God hates fags, as we know. Uh, thank you so much, Jonathan, for being here today. My pleasure. Okay, take care.